Jesus Christ. I know that we have gone past the month of August, but since it is important for us to share what I am going to share with you today, as you know that this is a series which started about three weeks ago, we need to talk about this. We need to go on and talk about this, even if it's past the month of August. We know that in the month of August, it is termed Women's Month because we are celebrating women. On contrary, we are commemorating Women's Day. We didn't know that death was going to come from the hands of our loved ones, our brothers, our uncles, our fathers, our boyfriends, even our own husbands. The ones we once said I do to in the presence of the Lord. They made a covenant that they will protect us. They will be there for us through it all. Where has all that love gone? It is not enough that we are scared of the invisible enemy, coronavirus. But now we are scared of our loved ones. Before I start unpacking my topic, which is why the victims stay in abusive relationships, let us pray for families and individuals who have experienced violence and abuse and those who are in the process of healing. Let us pray. Loving God, be with all men and women who are in doubt about their intimate relationships. Give them clarity of mind and peaceful hearts so that they can make good decisions guided by your love. Let those who must descend any abuse that may exist so that they can learn to care for themselves with your help. Let those who must acknowledge that they are harming the others so they can learn to abhor their own behavior and come to true repentance and amendment of life. Keep us all safe in our relationships. In Jesus' name, Amen. When a woman tells about the violence that she suffers, the question that we often hear is, why doesn't she just leave? May I let you know that this is an unfair question to ask. The real question should be, how can I help you? There are many reasons why women stay in violent and abusive relationships, but I'm going to mention just a few. Let's first start with distorted thoughts. Being controlled and being hurt is very traumatizing. This leads to one being confused, have a sense of doubt, and have self-blame. Being accused of things that you've never done, it wears you down and creates a feeling of guilt and despair. Even if you know you've never done anything wrong. Using words of guilt and self-blame like I pushed him to do it or I triggered him. That is so unfair. Others will minimize abuse as a coping mechanism saying I stayed because I didn't know that financial and emotional abuse was the type of abuse. Why is that? It's because it doesn't leave any scars to tell the tale. Secondly, we look at isolation. Abuse relies on isolation. A perpetrator would pretend to show too much affection. You would hear a partner saying, no, let's use the same car to go to work. Or if you come back from work, 
leave your car if, if we have somewhere to go leave your car at home so that we can use one car you would think that oh i am so loved when in actual fact he is reducing or even eliminating contact with the outside world and this again results to confusion and thoughts distortion because you would think that you are being loved when in actual fact you are being monitored this makes it difficult to seek support when the victim needs it because you would find that the woman has no friends she doesn't have the family to go to whenever she needs them because she is always being monitored every step that she takes. Thirdly, I'm going to mention danger and fear. The victim is scared to live in fear of the dangerous situation. She could have been threatened to be killed by the perpetrator or she has threatened he has threatened to kill himself and the kids or even her family if she runs to them statistics have revealed that in 2017 alone 58% of women were killed by people close to them and 57% is their partners of the 58% 87% were killed in the first month of separation. So this explains the reason why the victims think either way they will be killed. Fourthly, it's shame and embarrassment. Perpetrators can be very deceiving people. Why? It's because they are respected people in the community. They are fathers. They are CEOs of companies, they are teachers, they are principals, even priests for that matter. We've heard of stories from the radio, from, from different media of, of women having been killed by their partners, by their known partners. It's easy for them to manipulate the situation because when the victim tells about the abuse at home. You would hear a mother saying, I gag, um kwenyan we am sugelange, or lung yegan je futien, a ye kopelindanga senze leon. You must go back, go back, we are slas and you go back. And then they blame the abuse to the victim. The victim gets to be isolated even further because she has no one to tell. There are other practical reasons that I'm going to mention, like lack of financial independence. You find that a woman doesn't have a job. So obviously that person won't be financially independent. So because of that, she would realize that if I live here, I won't have anything to live on. If she does have a job, she will control the finances. He will control the finances. There are couples who have a tendency of opening joint bank accounts. I'm not going to say it's a good thing or it's a bad thing. But in such situations where there is abuse involved, joint bank account is a no-no. Because this is how the perpetrator will be able to control the finances. That will make it impossible for the victim to have a job. After you've gotten married, while the marriage is new, the partner would say, no, I don't want you to get a job. I want you to stay at home and raise our beautiful kids. Whereas, in actual fact, he just wants to control you. As years go by, you're growing old, no one will be able to employ you at your age. So even if you run away, you won't be employed. 
employable. Others will instill fear, instill fear of taking your children. And you would say, if you go, you must know that you won't be able to see your children ever. Or if you are fortunate enough to be able to file a divorce, you will make sure that you don't gain custody of the children. Some women would have fear of single parenting. They've never been in such a situation, so they imagine themselves being single parents as something difficult. Others would stay because they hope that things will change. You know the tricks of an abuser. He will beat you today. Tomorrow he, bring, he brings chocolate and flowers and apologize. And then you will realize that he is really sorry. So you would think that maybe he was just angry and hoping that things will change. Some women get into the country and be able to have the, 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 a secure immigration status but by getting married to a country citizen. So that makes things easier for her to become a citizen of the country. So should things get difficult, then it becomes very difficult for such a person to run away because she fears to be deported or she will always be told that should she decide to run away she might be deported some partners have a tendency of taking people or partners who have no relatives who have nowhere to go, like orphans. They will take you as an orphan, give you everything you need, and then they start the abuse thereafter. So that partner is sure that you have nowhere to go. Unfortunately, our religion and culture put us in a or put the victims in a situation which makes it difficult to take any step if they are in an abusive relationship. You will find priests saying getting a divorce is abominable and you wonder if a person should stay in an abusive relationship until the person dies. You would hear mothers saying, I gag, we are slazanch. I get come to go a boy a man doing like I. Osman ban, Robo Babon, baby sushu, got the razor baboy a man doing. You be the first one to come back home. Pindela, Pindelio slas. Unfortunately, some of those victims end up in the grave. Some would stay because they believe that it's better for children to stay in a household with both parents than whereas being having both parents in a, in an in an abusive situation is even worse. Others stay because of lack of knowledge, of safety, of where they can go if they are faced with such a situation or of the support that they can get if they run away from that situation, which I think it's the next session that we are going to hear after this one. Coming to conclusion, I'm gonna say a word of warning, which is abuse thrive in silence. So please shout. God sees his daughters as beautiful, strong, and worthy to be respected. Let us protect and nurture girls and women and afford them with equal rights. 
I'm going to quote a verse from a book of Matthew 25, verse 14. Whenever you did for any of my people, no matter how unimportant they seemed, you did for me. So if you help a victim or if you help a destitute woman out there, you will be doing good. God will trust. Thank you.